What I've got here, this collection of things, uh, is going to demonstrate the centre of mass. The centre of mass is one point on an extended object where if you apply a force, the object won't rotate. So we could take something simple like a ruler and to find the centre of mass, I can move my hands together and this will give me the centre of mass or the balance point. In other words, the forces on one side are equal to the forces on the other side. Now, for a ruler, that's fairly easy because it's the middle of the ruler. But for other objects that are not as the mass is not distributed quite so easily, you can do the same thing. And you'll notice that my right hand is sliding. And that's because all the force at the moment from this is mostly on my left hand. So the right hand is free to slide. But a point comes where it won't slide anymore. That's the forces are evenly balanced. And then maybe the other one slides. So it's just tipping backwards and forwards. And now we get to the point where we have equal balance on both sides. So this is the center of mass of our object. The one place where if I push through there, the object won't rotate. If I push at any other point, if I push it through the end, it will cause the object to turn. Again, for something that's weighted a little bit differently, we can find the center of mass. But there are some things where the center of mass is not in the object itself. How do you then find the center of mass? You use the same idea. You say, all right, well, if I hold it up, then the center of mass is going to be somewhere below that pivot point because the force down on one side is equal to the force down on the other side. So it'll be somewhere along there. And then if I pick another point, it will somewhere under here. I pick another point, it will be somewhere under there. All these three cross at this point. This is the center of mass for this object. And this object, when you throw it, rotates around its center of mass. And it's the center of mass that follows the projectile motion um, curves with the object rotating around it. It's useful to know the center of mass or the balance point because you can take something like this little bird and it will balance there quite happily and quite stably because its balance point, its center of mass, is actually below the beak. So if you hang it like this, it's going to be somewhere down here. If you hang the tail, somewhere down here. If you hang the other side, somewhere down there. And if I hang it sideways so you can see it, it's going to be somewhere underneath here. So you can do all sorts of neat things with this little bird. And it stays fairly well balanced. Because its weight is underneath the beak there. Other things are not well distributed. Their mass is all over the place. And they do crazy things. You wouldn't expect a ball to roll like this. It's because the weight of it is not distributed evenly through the ball, it's down the bottom. So it keeps trying to get its weight as low as possible. And it's most stable when the weight is down here and the center of mass is there. Similarly with our little jumping bean. Oops, jumping bean has jumped away. Our little jumping bean. Again, we're looking at the center of mass of it. And the center of mass keeps changing, which is why it keeps moving in strange directions. Because there's a little inside here is a lead weight, which keeps shifting its position. And so it keeps trying to get as low as possible. So there we have center of mass. Oh, look at that. Um, way to find it, place where if you push through it, things won't rotate. If the center of mass is not in the center of an object, its motion is different to what you would expect it to be. And sometimes the center of mass is not even inside the object itself.